So if we call this last example A and this, this example right here B, let's move on and continue looking at the constant multiple rule. Um, sometimes it's helpful to use that rule and, and sometimes not so much. So here, let's look at another situation. Um, consider f of t equals 4t squared over 5. Okay. Um, what we could do here is we could pull the 4 fifths out in front in front, and then just differentiate the t squared. So that's one thing that we could do. So um, notice that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, just bring down f of t. And I'm going to get it ready for differentiation, 4 fifths t squared. Okay, and now I'm going to bring in the de derivative operator on both sides of the equation, d with respect to dt, uh, or f with respect to t, sorry, d over dt here. Okay, so this derivative would look like f prime of t. And then over here, if you wanted to, you could pull the 4 fifths in front, move the derivative operator behind it, and then t squared here. So we still have some work to do as indicated by this operation here. Uh, so bring down f prime of t. Uh, have 4 fifths and then multiply it by the derivative of t squared. Well, the derivative of t squared is just going to be 2t to the first power. So we're going to have 2t to the first power. And then we're going to do a little cleanup here. So f prime of t is going to be equal to 4 fifths times 2 whole. So that would look like 8 fifths t. So that's going to be the derivative of uh, 4t squared over 5. Uh, again, uh, maybe not using the constant multiple rule would be um, just fine for many of you. Um, looking at that, let me kind of go back to the original problem here and just kind of think about what we have going on, the structure here. Okay, If I were to find the derivative without using the constant multiple rule, okay, what I can think about is just kind of identify the constant as 4 fifths as the multiplier and then just go ahead and apply the derivative operator to t squared. Well, bring the 2 in front. We'll multiply it by the current 4 fifths. We've seen that 2 times 4 fifths is 8 fifths. Keep the base of t and reduce the exponent by 1 to 1. So as you guys can see, the, the derivative is the same no matter what process you go through. So some of you may choose to use the constant multiple rule, and others just might want to straight go to the derivative. Okay. Um, at this point, I, I kind of want to connect to um, a linear function. So it really doesn't have to do with um, uh, the constant multiple rule. Let's kind of look at y equals x for a minute, because this is an, an interesting kind of situation. Okay, um, just think about what that graph looks like, y equals x. We know the slope on that linear function uh, is 1. It has a constant rate of change. So we know the derivative y prime is going to be 1. Um, but applying the power rule, which we can do, if I were to bring in the derivative operator, and again, it's your choice. It's what you're comfortable with. This derivative would be dy dx, or again, y prime, or if it was called f of x, it would be f prime. Well, what's the derivative of x? Well, we know the slope on that function is 1 anywhere, so that's going to be our answer, but think about the power rule. This is really x to the first power. So using the power rule, multiply by 1, keep the base of x, and reduce the 1 okay, by 1 to 0. Well, we know anything to the 0 power is going to be 1 at this point. Okay, So that's just going to be dy dx, or y prime, equals 1. Had this original function maybe been y equals 7x, and you had a 7 here and a 7 here, um, you could use the constant multiple rule or just go straight to the power rule. But in any case, uh, the rate of change is constant on y equals 7x, and it's going to be 7, and that would result um, from us using the power rule as well if we wanted to. And another interesting situation as well with the constant. Let's go back to the constant function we started, started with. Let's say we have y equals 5. Okay, if you were asked what y prime is, easy enough, y prime is going to be 0. The slope or the rate of change on a horizontal line is going to be 0. But let's just go ahead and use the, the power rule on this. Okay, so getting it ready perhaps for using the power rule, consider 5 with the base of x to the 0 power. I can bring that in. So if we apply the power rule, y prime equals, okay, the power rule says 0 times 5 is 0. Keep the base of x. Reduce that by 1 to negative 1. Well, this is just going to be 0 over x. And we know 
In this case, uh, this answer is going to be 0. So we can use the power rule on constant functions and get 0. We can use the power rule on linear functions uh, and get the answer as well that way, too. Okay, well, let's return to some work with the uh, constant multiple rule. Look at some other examples and some things that we can do. Okay, let's consider this function. Uh, it's going to take some rewriting on it, some algebra, so let's go ahead and rewrite it as 2 times x to the 1 half power. Okay. All right, you can use the constant multiple rule and just differentiate this uh, variable part of this, this function here, or you can just do it all in one step here. I'm going to go to y prime. It's ready. A half times 2 is 1. Keep the base of x. Reduce a half by one whole to negative one half. You're done, you're finished with the calculus. You could rewrite it in a different form, y prime equals. That would be one over x to the one half, but we know x to the one half is square root, so this derivative would look like this. Okay. So just kind of pay attention to the notation. Uh, try not to get sloppy with that. Okay, let's look at y equals 5 over 2x to the third. Okay, studying this equation, we have 5 halves x to the negative 3. So let's rewrite it. Okay, notice the notation. I'm not going to a prime. I'm just doing some algebra. That doesn't require the prime notation. So I have 5 halves as the coefficient, bringing x out of the denominator. It would look like this. A much easier way to differentiate this in this form. So y prime equals, power rule, negative 3 times 5 halves. So that'd be negative 15 over 2. Keep the base of x, reduce that by 1 to negative 4. Again, you could pull the x to the denominator with 2 and express your answer that way. This is fine as well. Okay, if studying this function, this is just another linear function. Uh, so the answer should be negative 3 halves. Um, you could just go right to negative 3 halves, or if you just kind of get wrapped up in the problem and, and don't, you know, don't see that, if you use the power rule, that's fine. Um, this is going to be negative 3 halves is my constant, x to the first. So applying the power rule, it's going to be negative 3 halves. Keep the base of x. Reduce that to 0. Anything to the 0 is 1. So my answer would, in fact, be the slope that we thought it should be. Okay. So using the constant multiple rule. Okay. So let's look at maybe one more here. Okay. Let's look at this. Okay. Let's say I wanted to find the derivative. Okay, we have some work to do on this before we can actually differentiate. Uh, we need to actually cube this. So this would look like 5 over 8x cubed. Okay, still not ready for differentiation. Pull the x out of the denominator. Think of 5 eighths here as your constant multiplier. I don't have prime notation yet. 5 eighths x to the negative 3. Okay, I'm going to kind of come up over here, save myself some later space. Okay, applying the power rule, y prime equals negative 3 times 5 eighths, negative 15 eighths, keep the base of x, reduce it to negative 4. We could rewrite this, pulling x into the denominator with 8 with a positive 4 exponent, otherwise we're finished. Okay. All right, we need to move on kind of quickly. I want to look at the sum and difference rule. The sum and difference rule allows us to differentiate a function with multiple terms. Terms are what you add or subtract, and that's why I have this expression here. Let's say we have um, two or more terms, and we're either adding or subtracting them. If we want to find the derivative okay, of that, we'll bring in the derivative operator. Okay. What that looks like is we can actually differentiate it term by term, term by term differentiation. So the derivative of x or f plus or minus the derivative of g. So that's the sum and difference rule. 
So we've really only looked at um, differentiating single terms up here. So let's look at what if, okay? So let's look at some examples. Okay, that's k of x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 5. Okay, term by term differentiation. If I'm adding or subtracting, I have the sum and difference rule. So what I could do is bring in the derivative operator with respect to x. And this rule right here allows us to um, differentiate um, each term. So it would look like this right here. Are you going to be required with multiple terms to show the derivative operator? No, I'm going to do it through this one example first, but then after that I won't. So this notation becomes k prime of x. And notice everything over here was ready for differentiation, or I would have paused and done a rewrite. This derivative, power rule, 3x squared. This derivative, right here, power rule, it's a linear function. So it's minus 4. The derivative of 5, well, that's 0. That's a constant term, so that's 0, like our very first example. So we're done. That's the derivative right there using the sum and difference rule. So just be careful. There might have to be, you know, you might have to do some work on the function before you can actually use um, the power rule. So let's consider some j function. So consider this fourth degree function right here. Um, it appears to be ready for differentiation. Just think of this as negative one half. Don't forget about that coefficient, negative one, one right here. So let's go right to j prime. Okay, so we're going to multiply four times negative one half. Well, four times negative one half is negative two. Keep the base of x, reduce the exponent to three, plus differentiating this term separately, it's the power rule, so it's nine x squared. So that's the derivative um, of that, um, that function right there with multiple terms, sum and difference rule. Okay, and perhaps another example here of the uh, sum and difference rule. So let's look at this function right here. Okay, we found this derivative by the limit process in our earlier work with the formal definition. So notice that term by term, studying each term, they're all ready for differentiation power rule. I'm going to go to y prime equals well, what's the derivative of the constant line? One, well, this is zero. Let's apply the power rule here. So keeping in mind the, the operation here, we have negative two x. And if you remember, that was the derivative that we found by the limit process. So certainly these differenti differentiation rules allow us to find derivatives much more quickly than using the formal definition, okay? All right, and then one last thing to look at, um, is going to be the derivatives of sine and cosine. So in this video, we're going to look at the derivatives of just two of the six trig functions, the sine and the cosine function. Okay, so let's look at the derivative of sine. Um, through our earlier reading, too, you may well remember that the derivative of sine is, in fact, cosine. Uh, we can look at a graphical representation of that in class together, but right now just know that these are derivatives that we would want to Commit to memory. So dy dx equals cosine x. And what's interesting over here is that the derivative of cosine, one would think, would be sine. Okay, but you may well remember that the derivative of cosine is not sine. The derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine. And it's interesting to look at those graphically. Uh, we can explore that on our calculators when we come together in class, okay? All right, so let's look at some examples of these two trig functions, okay? Okay, consider y equals two times sine x, because it'd be nice if we just found the derivatives of sine and cosine all day long, but uh, that's not gonna be the case. All right, let's bring in the derivative operator. It's ready for differentiation. Okay, well, right here, y prime, this is a perfect time to use the constant multiple rule. For example, two times, it's a constant multiplier, the derivative with respect to x of sine x. Okay, so y prime equals two cosine x. So 
a lot with the trig functions, the constant multiplier rule comes in in quite handy. Okay, so that's example A. Let's come over here and look at example B. Okay, what about if I had 2 plus sine x? Okay, well, that derivative. Term by term, we're using the constant multiple rule as well. Derivative of 2, the constant is 0. Derivative of sine is just cosine. Okay, and then perhaps one more here. Okay, let's look at these two terms. So y prime equals derivative of 2x would be 2. We're going to use the constant multiplier rule here. So each term may require a different differentiation rule, and so just be on the lookout for that. Well, this is going to be plus 5 times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. We might want to do a little cleanup on that. So that becomes y prime equals 2, but this product gives minus 5 sine x. So it's term by term differentiation and again each term may require a different differentiation rule. Alright, well I guess that's enough for now.